Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're at um, Unit 2, so we finished with Unit 1. So we're starting with uh, Chapter 5 and 6. You will see these chapters um, is very important to actually learn and there's not a lot to take out of it. Um, but don't underestimate these chapters. Uh, please read through them um, because they will help you a lot with your discussions and your, um, your philosophy. Full, um, view of innovation so there's not, not a lot that I can ask from these chapters chapter 6 and 5 that we're going to discuss today um, but um, like I said um, you're still going to um, make use of this um, the content of these chapters to actually discuss the questions that I may ask um, and the practicality of things so um, just looking at the learning outcomes conceptualizing the grassroots of innovation so uh, we're still looking at the main areas of innovation in construction what drives innovation what's the goal of innovation then uh, secondly we're trying to understand the constraints of regulations towards innovation so this is very important uh, how much regulations actually influences our um, innovation process and then explain how innovation diffuses across the industry so um, that's now in chapter 8 that we're going to look at the diffusion of information so chapter 5 6 7 and 8 can actually be seen as one holistic chapter um, so you need to be able to look at the grassroots uh, the regu regulations which is chapter 6 and then in the in this the industrial perspective on innovation and then the diffusion you need to look at the, the diagrams that, that we're going to have and actually um, try and make an um, uh, interpretation of how information actually um, transcends between or diffuse between companies between people and communication so you can think about that in your own career how you get more information and and so forth okay then grassroots innovation in, in the construction so we're starting with chapter five so chapter five is all about we are down um it starts with the information transfer and so it starts we are at the dawn of the information revolution and we actually very far into it if you think about if um if you ask any question how quickly you can take uh, put out your uh, cell phone and um, get that um, information quickly and easily uh, whereas in the olden days you had to rely about extensively on uh, past experience so these days uh, a good skill to have is actually doing research and having the knowledge how to do quick references uh, to information then um, this chapter focuses further on the statements that business has to innovate or die okay so we're going to have a look at it at that a little and then no construction firms are listed as innovative so from the research we could see that but yeah i think that's something which is almost like a given um in the previous chapters we dealt with all the reasons for that i think there's legitimate reasons why we're not seen as innovative and then innovation has the critical dimension of economic change um uh, as discussed so economic change is a big uh, driver in um, innovation this uh, the element of the grassroots innovation um, is discussed and then um, in practice the following headings is used so uh, organizing around your opportunities utilizing corporate corporate identities taking an emergent view being inclusive developing unique resources collaboration and leveraging social capital so please be able to discuss uh, these headings uh, so please go through your um, your book and read through it so that you at least know and give, can give examples of all of these okay then um, all of the above uh, is then applied in the construction industry so what they did was they took all these categories and they uh, looked at the construction industry and looked at where um, how they contribute and they rated them accordingly so the main co conclusion that they got from this was finally the findings um, strongly support the research um, that found that a strategy in the construction environment is more emergent than pre-planned shaped by unexpected opportunities and the need to win work so the main thing is it's project driven as we saw in the previous chapters
Okay, then we look at um, chapter six, regulations and innovation of the new um, build insight into the adoption of diffusion micro genera generation technology. So this is what we discussed at the workshop as well in the lecture the other day. Um, it's all about acceptance of by the community and regulation. So I'm just going to run through this. So I've already discussed this with you guys. Um, I think everyone um, um, could um, at least heard what I've already explained to um, about this chapter. So uh, it might be that I'm I'll miss one or two things now, but I think um, you will get the um, get the idea. Um, so I'm just going to run summarize that again. Okay. So this chapter is all about a case study that was done in the UK, uh, and it's a chapter. Uh, this chapter specifically looks at the regulation towards sustainable buildings. So there was regulations imposed in the UK to make buildings more sustainable. Okay. Then um, what they did was they uh, retrofitted houses with um, new micro technologies um, um, like solar geysers and heat pumps and that type of thing. So. <clears throat> what they basically concluded is that these technologies are not generally selected on the technical merit uh -huh, um, regarding the ultimate policy objectives, but rather for their cost effectiveness in effecting compliance. Okay, this is the key role. This is what you need to take note of, of rules and regulations. So the main thing is the guys specify them because it's a regulation, it's a tick box that they need to tick. Yes, we thought of alternative energy saving uh, material and not to add too much cost to the building. Um, they chose the cheapest one uh, that should be adopted to that. So instead of looking at, uh, um, at the main goal um, of uh, energy efficient um, uh, supply of energy. Then in practice, regulations does trigger innovation in the sense that new products are adopted and new ideas are implemented in practice. However, the case of the micro generation technology selected illustrates innovation is a complex process involving different actors with certain outcomes. Now, I need you guys to make the connection to chapter two, where uh, it was stated that uh, it is innovation is driven by passionate people. So even though you have regulations that state you need to, um, for instance, in South Africa, new regulations state that you have to have a professional health and safety consultant in each project. Um, it is not implemented yet because there's certain stage gates. Um, I think it's about uh, 13 million and above. It's compulsory. But if you have passionate people, you can prescribe in your tender documents that health and safety, that that type of health and safety consultants and your site specific um, health and safety plan should be drawn up according to the regulations should be implemented, even though it's not needed. So that's where the passion comes in and actually make it work, making it workable and not um, um, just ticking the box and um, then in the end it doesn't really matter whether the site specific specification was drawn up or not because no one really looks at it so that's where the passion comes in okay now although a micro uh, generation technologies um, has been adopted the carbon reduction will be limited because of the end user has interfered with the heat pumps okay so you can see <clears throat> this is what typically happens the community has to buy into that um, usually these energy efficient heat pumps it's a little bit maintenance is has needs more maintenance than your general geysers that you use on, on your general buildings so in the end just uh, the home builder um, or the end user um, sorry I just missed that in in this particular case therefore the innovation introduced as a means of complying with the regulations will not fully satisfy the need of the policy maker okay the home builder or the end user because it was made redundant because it was bypassed therefore whereas the rules and norms play a very important role the fix are not always obvious and not always anticipated okay so there's there's a, a bit of a path to walk um, it doesn't um, you're not going to change the world through policy alone 
okay then i want you guys to have a look at um at this next video and we um <clears throat> innovation actually um and passion passion um drives uh, development in abu dhabi so um uh, please see the link that i've posted here and paste it in your video and it's a nice enjoyable video um and uh, the guys are talking about um a whole lot of money a bit a bit out of our framework i think but yeah definitely worth the view and a lot of um, nice information that you can get from that okay thanks and that's um chapters five and six